I will cover this, but we had a question that came in, and I'm not 100% clear on it. It was from Eileen. It was from early on, but she had to leave. Um, all right. And she, Eileen says, if you have a minus bid price, say minus 50 cents, and a positive ask price, say 80, does that mean add the two together and half in two? Yeah, yeah, okay. So analyzing midpoint is what Eileen was discussing there. Okay, and so let's just take a look at some of our positions. It's going to be really fast here. If I was looking at selling a call or selling a put here, this is a terrible example. Let's go to Apple. Let's, let's just go to an Apple chain. Okay. When the bid-ask spread is only one cent, well, it doesn't do us much good. All right, and we'll stay with puts here because we were talking about some of the bull put credit spreads recently and so forth. Let's go to May 15th. All right. So, Eileen, here I have a bid of five and an ask of 538 for the 282 and a half put on Apple for May 14th. So, yes, there's multiple ways you can do it. You, you could add them both together, simply put, and you could say, okay, well, the bid and the ask together is... 10.38 divided by 2 equals 519. Pretty simple. Just add the bid and ask spread together and divide by 2. That's your midpoint price is 519. Absolutely. You know, you could also say we'll just take the um, 38 cents, the difference between the two. It's hard. It's, you know, 38 divided by 2 equals 19 plus the $5 bid price equals 519. You can do it any way you want to. But yes, simplest way is to add the two together. Divide by two. So you have a bid of 50 and an ask of 80. Naturally, the points together would be 130. And then dividing by two, your midpoint is 65 cents. 15 up, 15 down. There you go. Absolutely, Eileen. All right. Fernando, uh, I think I thought we covered this before, but that's okay. Fernando asked a question. Hi, Mike. Can you explain when it is useful to use volatility skew on the signature tools? Okay. Well, to me, Personally, and anyone can comment on this if you have any other comments, let's just stick with Apple, and I'm going to use the time skew, not the strike skew. I'm going to use the time skew with the 290 strike. Okay, so what investors look for here is what's known as the volatility skew, naturally, or the volatility smile. This one is a tough time to do because everything is pretty equal right now, isn't it? Everything has a high implied volatility. All right, so... The highest implied volatility, 0 0.34, 0 0.36, is for September 18th. You probably can't see that. Let me clear it up. Okay, so the highest volatility is September 18th. The lowest implied volatility is 515 on the call, 0.33. That's kind of unique. Yeah. Okay, 0.35 out here. Okay. So... Typically, what I use this for, Fernando, and the only thing I use this for, and I might be using it wrong, I have not seen any consistent evidence. I know a lot of uh, teachings out there say that the volatility skew out in time gives you a projection of the likelihood that the stock's going to move by X percent in the next 30, 40, or 50 days. I have not seen anything to lead any credence into that, and part of the reasons why is implied volatility is fluctuating all the time. You're basing your trading off a screenshot where IV is right now, and two weeks from now it changes and the volatility shifts. You might actually be in a losing position, okay? But that's how some investors use it. I haven't seen anything statistically that shows me that works on a regular basis. But in any case, what do I use this for? I use this for my diagonal call spreads. I think this is important really only for calendar spreads, and what do I want? If I'm selling premium at 515, in theory, what I always want is an implied volatility ratio of my sell to buy of greater than one. I want my sell option implied volatility to be higher than my imply, uh, my buy implied volatility. And that's what I'm looking at here. And if I see a good skew where it's going like this, well, that tells me this is a good place to potentially buy leap options or far out options for my diagonal spreads to be selling near term against them. A crazy market though. And I'm not sure why here at the at, now this is just the at the money strike, of course, but that's usually what you'd look at for standard calendar spread, the horizontal spread, not the diagonal. But I still want to see that type of skew for my diagonal positions. The puts look a little bit better if I was selling here in June and buying out here in, uh, wow, two years out, January of 2022. That's a slight version of what I'd want to see, but that's on the put side, not on the diagonal call side. The calls are worse. 
the implied volatilities are up here at 0.35. And it's not a lot, I know, but in general, that's what I want. I don't want to sell into 0.34 and to buy into 0.36. I'd want that reverse. I want my implied volatility ratio sell to buy to be greater than one. That's how I use it. Now, this is the time skew. This, I feel, is what's important for the diagonal spread trading. You saw earlier when we looked at the individual, you can look at the strike skew for just a standard expiration. Uh, May 15th, we'll stick with that. and We'll look at all strikes. I wonder if this is going to be reversed. Oh, didn't like that. Hold on one second, Fernando. There we go. Now, see, what this is showing us is that there's a smile and pretty much a skew. A skew rated to the calls, but almost a smile related to the puts, meaning that the at-the-money strike here, you have higher implied volatility in the money and higher implied volatility out of the money. Is this to say that you should be doing a bear put debit spread where you're selling into high implied volatility here and buying low implied volatility here? Um, only if you're bearish on the stock. Otherwise, that volatility does you no good. If it goes bullish, you lose money. What about a bull put credit spread where you're selling here and buying here? Well, if the stock goes up, that's going to be a good bull put spread. But the implied volatility ratio is not what you want because it's less than one. You're selling into a lower IV than you're buying. You see what I mean? So I, I don't use this for vertical spreads. I only use this really for diagonal spreads as, a, as my last selection. I've already looked at my return, I've looked at my delta ratio, I've looked at my applied volatility ratio on the search already, so I don't really need to go to this skew. But I might check the skew when I'm opening a new diagonal spread, and that's the time skew, not the strike skew. And order that. Now, as I mentioned, going back, so, so yeah, I'm looking at the time skew here from a diagonal spreads in that case. Again, I just have not seen, I know a lot of people teach it, I know a lot of people talk about it, I have just not seen consistent results saying that when you have a skew or a smile, you know, of course, and the smile means you have lower implied volatility near term and higher farther term, but that always means the stock's going up or down, or even consistently means the stock is going up or down. Or if you have the reverse, if you have the skew, where over time it does this, well, this does look good for a diagonal spread for my case. But this doesn't give me any extra credence that consistently this means that the stock is going to go down in price over time or go up in price over time. Okay, just I just haven't seen that consistently. So that's how I use the strike, um, the skew, excuse me, in that case. That's when I use it. The only time I use it there as well. Okay, Raj, um, uh, I'm not sure if we're using the same link here, but Raj says, if I have a naked call already present and it's going opposite, how do I protect against that? Okay, well, <clears throat> excuse me, folks. Raj, when you say a naked call, I consider that the opposite of a naked put, meaning that you're selling, you sold the call, which is a bearish position. Okay, what went up today? UVXY, right? Okay, so UVXY jumped today a little bit, 4760. Sam, you had mentioned to me earlier that you your trade the other day was in 42 on shares of UVXY. You got the gap that you needed there. Let's say in this case, uh, bearish position, I had sold a 44 call on the VIX, naked call expecting, or the UVXY, and I expected it to fall, Raj, okay? This to me is a naked call. So I sold it, and uh, let's say we got $2 for it at the time, a couple days ago. All right, so here's my naked call. Break even is at 46, so I'm beyond that, and it's at 47.60. This is a naked call. Why do I keep repeating that? Uh, I'm not sure what Raj meant. It does show that he has left, so I'm not sure if he left and then had to log back in. Um, in that case, okay. So here we are with this particular position. The naked call has moved against us. Um, sorry, what some investors say is, Mike, I have a naked call that's going against me. The stock fell, and I freeze, and I say, wait, the stock fell. That's what you wanted to have happen. What they meant is they bought a call. It's not a naked call. They just bought a call unprotected, and the stock's moving down. Okay. Well, in any case, Raj, terminology, naked call, stock has gone up in price. How can I protect against this? Well, number one is that hopefully that you had the ability. You would use the stops just as we talked about with the naked put. I don't trade these naked calls, but... You'd sold a naked put, I'd use the 1% rule in this case. Um, and if the stock 
breaches that, I'd look to roll it or get out of the way of the freight train in that case. What's another way to protect against it? Well, as it starts to go against you, you're likely not going to be able to convert it to a spread position to counter that. What do I mean? When you sold a put here, I'm sorry, you sold a call there. If I buy a higher strike call, that's going to be a bear call spread, but this price is going to be inflated because the stock has just moved up. So it's probably not going to be at a profit in this scenario because you're paying much more than you received here and the difference in strike prices is going to set you up at a loss. But at least now you have a known risk. You've capped the loss to the sense of the bear call spread by buying that extra call. That's one way to protect it. Of course, another way to protect it is to get complicated. You could convert this into a sort of a ratio spread position. It's not something I like to do with naked puts. But now that the stock has moved up, I could maybe now enter a bull call debit spread. I don't think it's going to give me a profit. How would I do that? Well, I sell maybe the another in the money 44 call at 635. And now maybe buy a 42 strike at 760. Now that's going to cause a debit. But if the price here, and I'd average the two prices, but if the price I get back from this debit spread counters the loss, what have I done? I've sort of created a ratio. No, this isn't a ratio spread. This is that back ratio spread where I've got a bull call debit. You already had the naked call. My apologies. But you did move the break even up slightly, but in this case, not enough. You moved it up to 46.82, but you're still at a loss. You might have to look at a different bull call debit spread in that case to try to help repair it. So some of the same ideas that work for the naked put position, the managing your naked put position there, would apply to the naked call as well. Selling the naked call position, Raj, that might work as well. Um, so again, we, we talked about several things. And for Octavio, I forgot to mention, at least I think I forgot to mention it, with, oh, no, I did. I showed the... Um, the webinars here, we talked about the eight ways to manage the bull put credit spread. But further down here, now I apologize for this, Raj, because I don't cover naked calls a lot. But my apologies, scrolling down. We're in the option strategy section, introduction to naked puts. And here's one on managing your naked put positions. So, Raj, you may be able to watch that webinar and sort of reverse the ideas to your naked call to see other ways to potentially repair the naked call position as well as what we just discussed, converting it to a spread or maybe adding a bull call spread. If, you're, if your sentiment is that the stock's going to continue to move up and go against you, adding a bull call spread, which sort of creates that ratio spread, which might increase your break even and give you a little bit more room. But again, remember, if the stock continues to move against you, what doesn't that bull call spread do to create the ratio spread? It doesn't stop the pain to the upside if it keeps running. It just gives you a little bit less loss you can still see infinite loss to the upside in that case. That's not what we want. We want to be decreasing the risk as much as possible. All right, so Eric says, I'm sorry if you've covered this already, but how and when would you adjust a calendar that's gone against you? I don't know if you're in a calendar. Oh, you're in puts. I'm sorry. TAP, 42 and a half strike, really short term. Okay. Stops would be used, Eric, in a similar principle as some of the discussions that we've had that you might have missed. That's perfectly fine. So let me put in TAP. Anytime I'm in a covered call, a naked put, or anything that has a short strike, that's when I usually will use this. And I know it's tough because it can go against you. So you're short the 8th and you're long to the 15th. There we go. Submit. And get the actions right, Mike. All right. Sell the May 8th by the May 15th. 42 and a half. Strikes moved against you. We're at 38.92. Okay. <clears throat> right around, yeah, they're, they're overlapping each other. That's why you can't see it real well. The, the break even's 38.90. The current stock price, 38.92. Okay. Now, I know you got a, a different premium. I put it in using the prices that are current, Eric, so that's not helping you with this basis. Um, Yeah, I'm sorry. Sam, going back. Thank you, Sam. He says, interest to pay margin is not your hard-earned monies. Um, it's better not to use margin in those situations because you're paying more. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, typically, Eric, and this doesn't help you now, I know, but typically if I had entered a, I prefer diagonal spreads over horizontals. Um, but what I typically do anytime if I'm in a diagonal spread 
or a diagonal put spread and you're looking at a horizontal, what I typically would do, of course, is look to adjust the position if the stock started to fall, or in this case rise, to within one or one and a half percent roughly of that short strike price, which in your case, I'm sorry, is both strike prices. Um, I'm having my trained lingo of eight years of doing webinars and I keep forgetting that horizontals are the same strike because I always talk about diagonals. All right, so within one or one and a half percent, if you start to see a move upwards, I'm sorry, in your case, it's a move beyond one or beyond one and a half percent, that's when I would look to start adjusting the position. I'm sure this gapped against you the last two days, just like a lot of stocks moved against everyone else. Okay, let's just take a look. I want to see the chart here very quickly, Eric. Or was it just today? Oh, no, just like everyone else the last few days. So yeah, yesterday, what I might have tried to do is move the put further out. And then, of course, you had another two-point drop today, which is very stressful and difficult, I'm sure. But once it moved beyond, you're at the 42 and a half. Once it moved sort of beyond there, near the close of yesterday, hopefully you caught it at the open today. It did look like it opened pretty good, but probably dropped quickly. Hindsight 2020, I know it's, it's sounding kind of rude of me to say that, but that's what I would look to do in general, is to move the strike out to sort of convert your horizontal, and I mean the short strike, to sort of convert your horizontal into more of a diagonal spread that we were just looking at. Okay, more of a skew, but it's really going to be sharp, and you also might really drastically reduce the profit and loss if the stock continues to go in that direction. That's one of the ways. You might consider rolling it down just like you'd look to roll down, say, a naked call, as we were just talking about, that starts to move against you, is to buy back the short and then move it down to lower strike, give you more room. That's what you're doing here. You're trying to give yourself more room. If you can catch it quick enough, and it looks like it's going to be a pronounced downturn, what you could also maybe do, if you're lucky enough, is buy to close the short and now just leave it as a long put position. With this type of strategy, because you're so short term to expiration, you've bought one 14 days out, you've sold one seven days out, it's such a short time of expiration between strikes and you're really going to start, start to get close to that higher one delta of these positions with only five days to go on your short being four and a half points out of the money, I'm sorry, three and a half points out of the money roughly, and your delta here is going to start going up as well. It's hard to manage with that short of a term. That's why I'm not going to you know, talk about, well, what if we added the opposite? What if we added now a horizontal call spread at the 38 or 39 strike to get premium here to help hedge this position and sort of create a double diagonal? Only five days to go to expiration on the short. I think it's going to be too much. Trying to do too much management to create a double diagonal or a double butterfly or a double fly position it doesn't help stop the problem that you could still have loss in this direction, okay, with the profit and loss chart that you have on this horizontal spread, which is already similar to a fly, a butterfly position as it is. Mm. So you could treat it like a covered put position as you would if you were short stock and you sold a put, started to move against, you just continue to roll it down, you're creating a diagonal. I, I don't play horizontals that much, Eric. Um, at all, really, sorry. I'm not saying anything against it. It's just not my preferred strategy. I don't like things with a peaked profit and loss chart in this case. Um, I don't do uh, butterfly positions. I don't do iron butterflies. I don't do all call or all put butterflies because I just don't like that peaked profit and loss chart there at the top. Yes, I know you've got a wide upper and lower break even, and you've got a low risk compared to a high return. Um, but in general, we've seen other webinars why I don't prefer this structure. You could also consider, Eric, or analyze the moneyness and the potential profit if you did close this spread out here and now opened a 38 or 39 spread at the lower strikes or based on where your expectations are for the stock moving back up or recovering or falling back down. So unfortunately, we have to wait now, Eric, to see, but on Monday it'll be interesting. If it continues to move down, you might want to analyze this closing your existing horizontal and then rolling it down to the next strikes. So you'll ha if you do still have a profit, it's going to be much lower than the original expected profit, but at least now you have a range of break-evens for the next five days that maybe is fairly sizable as opposed to being in the loss zone on the original position. Or analyze the benefits of rolling down that put or just roll down both to this level as well. 
that would kind of be my suggestions there in that case, Eric, for the double, I'm sorry, your, your diagonal spread position that is moving, your horizontal position that is moving against you uh, in that case. So going back to the full comments I sort of skipped over earlier, we had talked about Sam, he had mentioned to me, of course, that he had uh, done UVXY at 42, and we saw that earlier, the UVXY was at 4760, that's the hedge that he's using. Um, not a hedge, actually. I think you're using this for profit, uh, Sam, on these positions. You're using these ones for profit. I actually, was because of what we talked about several weeks ago, the VIX price was too high. The VIX calls are still too high, in my opinion. So I've been using buying five or six shares. Now that I started opening bull puts up again, following the bull put weekly trend, I bought so shares, 10, 20 shares, 10, 15 shares. I think it was 15 no, it's 10. I'm sorry, I bought 10 shares of UVXY to act as a hedge for my bull put credit spread portfolio if the market starts to turn against me, which it's started to turn in the last few days, but thankfully the positions I had that expired today all expired worthless, and I was able to get out of the VIX with a little bit of profit, or UVXY with a little bit of profit. So sorry, just a full comment. Sam says, when, um, when, when buying, when the time to buy the Contra ETFs, UVXY, SPXL, uh, is an important decision to make. SPXL right now is at 80 RSI. Um, looks like it's the time to buy SPXU or SPXSU uh, and accumulate calls uh, and shares you will not go wrong. I did this many times and have yet to have a losing trade. Now, it's a bouncy market when the volatility is spiking. Uh, you can use the times when the market's moving up to get cheaper shares or cheaper calls or add to the positions of those contra ETFs and then when you have that spike it works out good so this was a what was an eight day run here where we had that nice peak here and then you know three or four days six days of accumulation then the bottom and then another two days up here uh, for the contra ETFs inverse ETFs and the volatilities going back to the discussion on naked put Sam says a naked puts a fantastic way to buy shares at the bottom you should really need to have 25k and more in the accounts. Uh, another way is to use bull put credit spreads that we looked at too. And if you get assigned the short put, uh, then buy the shares. And of course, you might not need that full account value as well. Um, oh, Sam says you take a profit uh, a day or two. Uh, uh, mostly in a day or two, you're taking the profit off the positions. You buy UVXY when you see that SPXL is at 80 and above. Okay. All right. Oh, and you had mentioned another position. You had OXY, uh, Halliburton, HAL, Penn, and shares of APA. Ooh, APA actually did good. Um, uh, it said lower Bollinger Band says buy UVXY. Yeah, it just had the break up today, I believe, but it didn't go above its 20-day moving average, did it? Oh, it's just right there, isn't it? Yeah, so it's coming off that lower band. Negative MACD there at the time. It looks like it's going to go that way as well. Um, Okay, let's see here. What was I? What was I thinking? APA. I want. Last time I saw that, I think it was at eight dollars per share. Or was it lower than that? It might have been six dollars. This used to be one of my favorite options trades years and years ago when the stock was in the. Um, it had been in the sixty and eighty dollar range, and and I like trading this stock. I don't think I ever did a married put on Apache, but I did calendar spreads and I did other positions. It's just strange for me to see. Yep, there it is. Low is below five, actually. A couple days ago, I looked at it when it was trading around six or six fifty per share. Nice move up a um, couple days ago, but it pulled back down now, um, down to eleven twenty eight now after hours, of course, change of uh, one eighty. Uh, so it's down eleven twenty seven, eleven twenty eight uh, from the close today um, in the after hours trading. But yes, yeah, good move up, good strong move up. Was that? Let me look on power options. I don't know if that was earnings related, if it was just related to more of the. Uh, oil market as a whole there <clears throat> or restructuring oh no they got earnings coming out five six okay so that's going to be that so they're probably doing some restructuring as well uh, in that situation oh yeah sure uh, Sam says the volatility ETN we are looking at in ETFs is good as speculation but don't hold longer because it can go against you fast yeah and that's the problem with the VIX is why I always close half when I get 50 per when I was using VIX calls I close out half of the VIX calls when I saw a hundred percent return then if I saw the next move up I'd close the other half and I missed some big runs in February and March because I had closed down most of my contracts from eight contracts down to four down to two down to one but if you hold it too long 
normal situations, think February 5th to 9th of 2018 and beyond, if you hold it for normal situations, if you hold it more than three days, you usually give back every gain that you've had because it goes back just as quickly as it came at you. You're exactly right, Sam. That's sort of the risks with trying to trade for the long term, UVXY, VIX, volatility, ETNs, and ETS. They're more speculative. For me, they're more of just a hedge against the bull put portion or leverage spread portion of my portfolio. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at, um, I apologize, 6.15 Eastern Time, 6.13 Eastern Time. Uh, I don't see any other questions that have come in. Uh, I do want to thank you all for the great conversations and the great discussions we had. Uh, we'll be able to uh, clip out and clip the various sections of our presentation today, get those posted for you, hopefully as soon as possible. I do want to remind everyone, of course, that uh, today's presentation are my thoughts on your questions designed for educational purposes, increasing investing performance and options knowledge. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct trading suggestions. I'm not going to go out and trade APA today. I'm not going to, or on Monday, I should say. I'm not going to open horizontal uh, calendar spreads on starting on Monday as well, uh, or any of the other positions discussed. I do, of course, have the position on KHC, Kraft Heinz there. Um, but yeah, we're not doing uh, any kind of recommendations or suggestions. Options do involve risk. We've seen a lot of that today, but we've seen a lot of ways to hedge against that and protect against it once the risk is taken and maybe even repair it. They do involve risk. They may not be suitable for all investors. If you liked any of the tools that we saw today, we looked at the portfolio tools a little bit in the beginning, saw the rollout opportunities that were available for us during the naked put discussion. We talked about the search criteria for the credit spreads and for the naked puts as well, the default searches and the weekly picks of the day that are available. Well, you can test all of that out. No credit card required. Just go to powerop.com, put in your name and email address, and you'll have full access to the site for 14 days. After that, the subscription started only $45 per month for the end of day data. Then after that, we do our delayed service is $65 a month. Of course, we also have the historical add-on, uh, the historical backtesting tools added on to the delayed service for only an increase of $35 or $100 per month. And of course, we do offer real time and the full package as well. We looked a lot today at some of the webinars. Remember, you can access those educational webinars on managing your broken position using the stock repair tool, uh, naked put screening criteria, management of naked puts, and the bull put credit spreads as well directly on the webinars page. We also went to the YouTube channel and we took a look at that three core principles and trade comparison, the married put against trying to get into the married put as a diagonal calendar spread compared to the married put versus the in the money long strangle or just the long call. But you can also search power options for general topics, debit spread, credit spread, bull spread, and you'll see the videos that we have available for that. Of course, you can also check out the blog at any time at blog.poweropt.com. All right. Well, it's, um, oh, yeah, Sam says when UVXY was at 10, I'll hold it for longer and I have 2,000 shares waiting for a jump or a spike. Absolutely. Um, and then you sold them at 30 and, and 39 there. I think that's what you're referring to with those there. Uh, Chuck says, stay healthy. Thank you, Chuck. You stay healthy. Everyone else stay healthy online too. Um, William says, thank you for being generous. Now, thank you, William. Thank you for your questions. Um, you have a great weekend as well. Uh, Sam, of course, have a relaxing weekend and stay safe. Put on a mask in public. Hey, I always do that. And I hope to stay safe as well. And everyone take care. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe as well. We'll see you next week. As I mentioned, I'll get this cropped up for you. We'll get those videos posted, and I'll send you everyone an email when the first webinars are posted and when the later webinars are posted as well. Take care, everyone. Good night. We'll see you soon.